Hi everyone, this is Richard Black. I have a really nice video for you today on how I do cartridge belts. How I sew them, how I design them, how I figure out all my measurements uh, for different calibers. These are some of the cartridge belts I've made. We have a regular holster style, we have just a belt style. Different cartridges as you see, different sizes of loops. You can put any number of cartridges on a belt loops that you'd like. This one here is a 30, 30 loop. But today we're going to make it simple. I want to show you just how to do it and then you could make your own styles and you can make your own belts after I show you how to do this. We're going to make belt slips. These are items, these are uh, cartridge holders that slip over your belt over your sling. There's a 22 one. Different styles of how it goes through the belt. And it's very simple and we're going to be showing you how to do this and let me show you the materials that we're going to be using today. Of course we're going to use our, our rulers. Two different sizes. I have my knife, my maul, my calipers. I have digital calipers as well as regular um, manual ones. Uh, if you have them, this is going to help you out. Your pen and pencil, calculator would be nice. A washer, large washer for rounding my corners out. A piece of um, poster board for making our pattern. The uh, size of the shell that we're going to be using. Our leather pieces, you can get them out of your scrap bin. You're going to need one piece. This is about a 10 ounce piece of leather. And it's about oh five inches by ten inches. And then the back side is another piece of leather. It's not as thick. This is about about a uh, five ounce leather here. And then you'll need a slot cutter for the back. And we're going to finish it off with neat's foot oil. Hope you can see this. We're going to heat up the neat's foot oil and brush it on, and then it'll make this last forever. Okay, these are every, everything we need, and we're going to go ahead and start by making our pattern first. Okay, if you've watched my videos before, you know that I do a lot of pattern making. It's how I start my project, and then I have them on file from that point on. It saves a lot of time in the future when I'm making certain items. I already have the design. It's been proven. What I'd like you to do is i got a piece of um, poster board that's about 7 inches by 10 inches. What I'd like you to do is take a first let's take off let's make the width of the uh, of the cartridge holder about two and three quarters inches. And let's go ahead and cut that. Okay, and then for length, I found that 9 inches works pretty good. So, let me lay, lay it on my grid here. And I got 9 inches right here. Okay, here's where the washer comes in handy now. What we're going to do is set it on the corners and we're just going to round off the corners. Go ahead and cut those. Ok, 
Okay, there's basically our, the shape of our top piece. What I'd like you to do is cut a second piece now. So again, we have a two and three quarters piece length, I mean width. Go ahead and cut that. Let's go ahead and make that nine inches as well. Okay, so that's basically the same size. We'll go ahead and lay that on here or round our corners the same way. So we're making two identical pieces. One will be used to lay on the leather to cut our pattern out. The second one will be our pattern for our cartridges, how they're going to lay on the belt. Okay, here we are. Let's go ahead and find the center of this. Okay, we'll mark our center, draw a line down the center, reference point. Okay, then let's come in on each end, oh, let's say an inch. We'll make our first slot at an inch. Okay, there we go. And we have our pattern here. What we're going to do is lay out, once we get our, um, our cartridge size, and then we'll lay the pattern on here and we'll make our holes and we'll lay it on our leather. The leather I'm going to be using to hold the cartridges is about a one ounce, one and a half ounce uh, calf hide. It's nice and pliable and it holds its shape. To measure the cartridge, go ahead and let's say, let's take the bullet there and with one of your rulers, let's lay this down here straight. And let's draw a line, straight line. Go ahead and take your bullet. Lay your one ruler on the line right here. And with the bullet pressed against it, take your second ruler and come in from the other side. And what you're doing is squeezing it together right there. Okay, and that's where your second line will be. Okay, that's one of the two measurements that we need. The second measurement, if you have the manual type of calipers, go ahead and narrow it down till it's the width of the bullet with the leather. As you see there, and if you have the digital kind, which is nice, just come in and squeeze it, and it's 13.88 meters, millimeters. 
Okay, now after we have this line, we have two measurements right here. We have this large, long, longer span right here is the length of that it takes to go around your leather. The shorter measurement here is the spacing between the bullets. Okay, so if our digital readout is 13.88 and if we want let's say 20 cartridges on this belt that'll be 271.6 millimeters so it's almost 11 inches okay with that I want to add another let's say two inches on each side so that's 11 13 15 inches total that I would like a strip uh, for my the casings okay now on the one cutout pattern the size I went ahead and made this strip here about 5 eighths of an inch it gives a little room at the top of the bullet and it shows the bottom of the bullet quite well so I'm gonna go 5 eighths of an inch on each side of my center line I'm gonna split 5 eighths Okay, now connect those lines. Okay, again, this is this, the width of the strip that we're going to be using to cover the bullets. Okay. When we're sewing this, whether it be hand sewing or machine sewing, our stitch line is going to be going, let me show you on the back side here, it's going to be going up and down between the bullets, and then to come down to the next one, we're going to sew crossways and then go up, sew crossways, go up, sew crossways, and then go up again. Okay, so we have to know, we want a, our needle to fall outside of the line of this piece of leather right here. So we're going to go about an eighth inch on each side. That's where our needle will come down. We'll turn our project, sew our other line, lay this back down on the line, and then sew it again. But we're going to be outside of that. So, back on this. The side we're drawing our pattern, you have the width there, so we're going to be going at least an eighth on each side of this. So go ahead and draw yourself a line at least an eighth of an inch. Okay, if I lay this down, again, now you can see that outside line. And this is where we're going to punch holes to tell us where, how we lay this on our piece of leather. This is where this caliper, this is where this measurement comes in handy. Starting, let's say right at the, where we drew our line one inch in, we're going to go ahead and mark in and along the outside line.
Okay, that comes to 12, 12 bullet loops. I'm going to do the same on the bottom side here. Okay, we got all those indented. I know it's hard to see, but we're going to go ahead and punch a hole in there now. <coughs> we'll call these our pilot holes. Very small hole. Um, not very large at all. And I'm going to follow that line on each of the indentations and punch a hole. Kind of see what I'm doing now? See the holes? Do the same on the other side. The slots for the back that your belt is going to go through. Okay, again, we're going to divide this into half. Okay, once you got your center points. Go ahead and draw a line down the center. Okay, same as kind of what we did on the other one to set our outside lines. Our slot for the belt will be one inch starting at one inch in. And our, our, where the belt comes out, make another line at the two inch. Same thing on the other side, line it up, come in one inch, and also mark the two inch line. Cut your slot cutter. This is a one and a half inch slot. It's the largest one I have. And most belts that men wear when they're hunting or anything, um, wearing a gun, at least an inch and a half, inch and three quarters uh, belt there. So this is an inch and a half. So I'm going to use this. Go ahead and I have a center mark on my punch right here, so I'm going to line that up on the one inch line. And our second slot. Same thing on the other side. Okay, this is where our, our the belt is going to go through on the back side. It'll slip in one, come out, and go across. Very nice. Okay, we'll take our pattern and we'll lay it on our leather now and uh, we'll cut our patterns out. Okay, we got a piece of leather and I'm going to, I'm putting the my template out of the poster board onto the leather and then trace, trace around it. 
This piece here is the back side, the belt loop side. Alright, there's our back pattern. This is the front piece. Okay, we have our two pieces of leather, our pattern drawn on both pieces, and I'm going to get my knife and we'll go ahead and cut them out. Don't forget to strop your knives, it just works wonders. If you can hear your knife cutting, it means it's dull, so strop your knives often. Okay, and there's our back piece. Normally I would leave this as a hole, and when I glue it, and then when I glued the top to it, I would trim away the excess. But because I have these slots in here, I like to line them up to make sure that they are in position correctly on the item. We have our two pieces cut. We'll go back to, we'll take the front piece, lay our template on it. Holding it down in place, go ahead with your fid or any uh, sharp pointed item and go ahead and mark, mark the holes. Alright, here is all of our, if you can see it, marked holes from the pattern. This tells me where the t where my needle goes in at the last stop and where it ends and where it takes off and goes to the next one. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and take the the, the piece of calf's hide that's going to be covering the bullet and we're going to go ahead and mark the lines where our sew lines are. If you remember our example when we first started out, I made two lines. I put the ruler on each side, pinched it in, and then that gave me these two lines. That's the distance between a around the bullet. Again, these holes are the distance between the bullets. So I'm going to give myself at least so an inch, inch and a half extra at the front and the back. And I'm going to go ahead and make a line. Now, using our template piece here, I'm just going to line them up and I'm just going to draw, remember we had 12 cartridges, so I'm going to go ahead and mark each line, just move this and just line it up for, for easiness. Okay, there's our 12 cartridge lines. We take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just start on my <clears throat> start of this the, the stitch in the middle and I'll come up and then I'll lay this down and then if you can see you can see where my punch marks are the two holes and where this line is and that tells me each time I'm going to sew it where my line is where my start is and when I go to my second one this just folds up rolls up and I go to the second one we'll go to the sewing machine and I'll show you what I'm talking about Okay, I'm at my sewing machine now. This is a Cobra 4, Class 4. It's made by the Leather Machine Company out of California. So it's really nice. Um, I'm using a nylon bonded thread. A, um, as far as the number goes, it's a number 207. And that's what I'll be uh, sewing with. Alright, to start off, we're going to go ahead and um, on one end Go ahead and start in the middle and I'm going to sew towards the hole. I'm up a bit. Okay, I'm going to rotate it. Get rid of these stitches here. Okay, I'm going to lay it on the line. It's in between the two 
indentations that I made and I'm going to go ahead and sew back. Count your stitches. That ends up to be five stitches. I turn it, rotate it around. I flip the leather over and sew back to the next indentation at the top. Turn around, go to the next line, lay it in between the two indentations. Just a matter of repeating yourself now. You can do this by hand if you choose to. It takes a little longer than with a machine. Okay, and it's our last loop now. Okay, there we go. All we got to do is cut off our ends now on each side. That didn't take long. Uh, hand sewing would take a lot longer. So we'll go over to the other table and we'll go ahead and we'll cut off our ends. Okay, I'm just going to cut off the ends pretty simple and straight. Uh, nothing fancy here. There's a couple different ways you can end it. You could leave a little extra there and you could put a little concho in there if you wanted to on each side like I did on one of my holsters. Okay, there's our top piece. Now we'll go ahead and we'll, um, we'll get our bottom piece and we'll go ahead and we'll cut our slots for the belt on that. Okay, we see our slots um, marked on there. Okay, there's our back piece where the belt will go in, come out, go in, come out. Now we're going to glue this, glue the two pieces together. I'm going to lay it on here though, because I'm going to make some uh, pencil marks and I want to show you where not to glue. Okay, let's just hold on here. Hey, lay the piece on there and just mark where the slotted areas are. Oh, I didn't show you the, the back of the uh, stitching pattern there. Looks kind of cool. Okay, so where we're not going to glue when we glue it is inside between the two slots. We're not going to glue in there when we glue the two together because that's where your belt's going to go through. But everything else will be glued. So let's go, go to the glue table. Okay, I'm going to glue it together with uh, barge cement, all-purpose cement. Remember, no Nothing in there, but everywhere else, we glue. Okay, this is set up pretty good. Let's go ahead and put the two sides together carefully.
Okay, because we want to make this look identical, I'm going to take this to my belt sander and round this off before I come back and make our stitch groove. So if you don't have a belt sander, just use some uh, regular sandpaper if you want or your knife. Uh, just even it all up and make it look nice before we do our edge coat. So let me go to the belt sander and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back from my belt sander. As you can see, it really nicely sanded it down, even everything out. Very nice. We're going to go ahead now and use a stitch groover and do our stitch line around it. Here's our stitch line. We'll take it back to the machine and we'll go ahead and stitch that now. There we go. Very nice stitching as always. Now we take it to the work table and we'll, we'll get our bone our bone creaser and we'll go ahead and uh, smash down the, uh, the stitches. Okay I like to press down the stitches. It presses them down so they don't get any wear and it looks they flatten them out actually. Makes them look pretty nice. Go ahead on the back side as well. All right, looks good. We're going to go ahead and put an edge coat on here now, and then we'll take it to the burnishing wheel. And then lastly, we'll apply the uh, knees foot oil. I'm using Feebling's Edge Coat Brown. All right, very good. Let that rest set up and dry and then we'll take it to the burnishing wheel. Okay this is set up pretty good. It looks pretty nice isn't it? What I'm going to do is go ahead and put some of this um, burnishing wax on it. For more information on that look at some of my other videos on burnishing. All right. Now I'm going to take this to the burnishing wheel and um, buff it out and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back from the burnishing wheel. Made it look really nice. Almost looks like it's just one piece. Pretty thick too. You have a 10 ounce and you have a 5 ounce. So there's 15 ounces. So Right now what I did is go ahead and heat some Neats foot oil. I like to warm it up because it penetrates the leather a lot better. And this just brings a final um, coat for it. It helps protect it. So go ahead and get a paintbrush and just brush it on liberally. Both sides. Okay, you can use your hands, you can rub it in more if you'd like. Depending on your weather, this should take about a day to dry. Pretty good. It's going to leave a nice patina on it. Okay, well, let's see what we got here. 
go ahead and put our belt loop belt in there and show you how that works out. This is tight being the first time. So you can see how that works. And the bullets slip right in. If you're going to make these and you make a lot of them, you're going to have to start making templates for every size of belt that you make. And you can also make a template uh, with the different size calibers of bullets. 357, 44, 22s, and then the same thing, all these other patterns. Uh, then your next belt will be real simple if it's the same caliber. You just lay this on top of your belt and um, punct puncture your holes. So, patterns, patterns, patterns. That's what it's all about. It saves time, money, and it keeps a standard product. This is Richard Black. Thanks for watching, and happy leathering.